What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to create margins and columns in Adobe InDesign. Now if you've ever used InDesign before you know that it's an app that you can use to create uh, books, ebooks, brochures, or do anything related to layout design. That's what InDesign is for. And today I'm going to show you guys how to create margins and columns. So for whatever it is that you create or whatever project you're doing in InDesign, you know how to break it up into different columns or adjust the margins to whatever it is you're, you know, creating in InDesign. So let's get started. So as you can see on my InDesign document, I have just a blank page. It's eight and a half by 11. I can adjust that if I want, but we're gonna start out fresh with a blank um, canvas, I wanna say, or um, page in InDesign. <laughs> it's referred to as a page, but sometimes I end up calling it a canvas if I'm doing a Photoshop tutorial or a Procreate tutorial or uh, Illustrator tutorial. But today I'm doing InDesign, so I'm gonna keep saying canvas but I really mean page, but you know, you guys get it. But anyways, to create columns in InDesign, we're gonna go up here to layout, and there's an option right here that says margins and columns. So we're gonna click that. And now we have this window that pops up. So as you can see, we have margins and columns both in the same window. A margin is, let me move this to the side. So the margin right here is this little purple and pink line that is around my page. That tells us the distance between the edge of the page like so. So by default, our margin is a half inch away from the edge. So if I use this ruler right here, see if I can move this over a bit. Well, let me get rid of this window real quick. So if I go over here, we can see that here's zero. That's where the page is right here. And then if I go down here, we can see that it's a half inch from the side. And if I bring back my margin and columns window, it's right here in decimals because right here on our ruler, it says one half and this is one, one inch. So half inch from the edge of our page, that's what this is. So that's what our margin is by default. We can change that if we want. Like say if we want our margins to be one inch from the edge of the paper, we can simply put in one and then by default, the unit is inches. So once you put in one, we put in one inch. But let's say you want one margin, let's say the top margin, to be a different distance away from the edge compared to all the others. So I'm gonna hit this little button right here with a chain on it, and that setting tells us that we want all the settings for each margin to be the same. But if the size of one margin is different, all we have to do is click this button to kind of deactivate it and we can simply put in a custom number for one margin. So in my case, I wanna change this top margin to about two inches. So I'm gonna simply put in the number two. And now that margin adjusts to two inches from the edge and all the other ones stay the same. But if I want all the margins to be the same, I'm just gonna reactivate this little chain icon. And now each margin set to two inches but if I want to change all that to be back at one inches, I can just simply put in the number one again, like so. And that's how you change your margins. So let me switch those back to a half inch. And I forgot to mention, when you're putting in margins like this through this window, it has to be in decimal form. Like on the rulers that I showed you earlier, we saw the fraction for one half. But when you're making custom margins in InDesign through this window specifically, you have to do it in decimal form. So 0.5 would be half. So I'm gonna put in half and then it automatically applies to each margin, which is back to where we had it at first. And if we look lower where it says columns, this is where InDesign is asking us how many columns we want in our document. So by default, it's at one, this big, huge column right here. It's gonna classify as a column, but as you can see, the number one is there. So this is gonna be just one big, huge column that takes up the entire page but we can also set that to a custom number. So I'm gonna change that to about three. So let's say we're just creating a very skinny brochure because this is a, a portrait orientation. So let's just set that. Actually, let me set it to two, two, two columns, okay? And now you can see that InDesign created two columns in our page. Now, regardless of the orientation of your page, you can set that to whatever number you want. You can have it set to three columns, four columns, 
five columns, whatever. You can set that to a custom number and it generates for you like this. But once those columns do generate, sometimes you may not be satisfied with the spacing between each column. That's where this option right here where it says gutter, that's where you can adjust the spacing between each column. So by default, it's at 0.1667 inches, but you can quickly adjust that by going to these arrows and clicking up and down. And watch how this changes. So again, this is in decimal form. Like right now I have it at 3 eighths. And now I have it at a half inch. So now the distance between each column is about a half inch. But just like all the other options in this margins and columns window, you can put in a custom number. Like I'm going to set it back to the way it was. It's going to be 0 0.1667. And now keep in mind that the units for this InDesign document is by inches. So after hitting that, it adjusts to the way it was before. And now after I'm satisfied with everything, I can hit OK. And now you can see that we have two columns in our InDesign document. But let's say you're reading a magazine or a newspaper that has a specific number of columns. And if you're reading a newspaper or a magazine, you can see that there's text in the columns that eventually stops at one corner and then continues back at the top of the page. I already made a video on how to create continuous text boxes, but I can show you guys how to do that real quickly. So I'm gonna go to my text tool right here, which is represented by the letter T that's what the icon looks like it's a letter t like so and then your arrow should look something like this so i'm going to click and drag anywhere i want to start the text box like right here in this corner here i'm going to click and drag to make a text box that's the same shape as this column here and i don't have any text to put in this text box but InDesign has a special tool you can use to fill this column with placeholder text for the purposes of this video. So I'm going to right click anywhere inside of this text box. And then I'm going to go all the way down to where it says fill with placeholder text. And now we have a bunch of nonsense text which is probably not even in English either. But yeah, you can see that we have a uh, placeholder text that's what InDesign gives you just random text here and there kind of like lorem ispum and then whatever else comes after that and after you fill that with placeholder text it fills the entire text box like it doesn't overlap at all but i'm gonna make it overlap by using the keyboard shortcut command a to select all that text command c to copy it i'm gonna make a space down here and then i'm gonna hit command v to paste all right, and if I look closely down here, you can see that at the end of my text box, there is a red box right here with a plus sign in it. That means there's more text in this text box that needs to be shown. So I'm gonna zoom out real quick, and that red box is still there. So what I'm gonna do is click on that, and then my arrow will have a text box waiting to generate with the text that overlaps from that text box. So I'm gonna make a whole nother text box within the second column of my InDesign document. So I'm gonna move my arrow to the corner of that column, which is right here. I'm gonna click, and then it generates a continuous text box in that column, like so. Now there's no more overlap. So if I get rid of just the text in this one box, I'm back over here in this text box, so I'm going to just uh, type in some random nonsense here. And now whatever I type, it now goes into this column, sort of like how Microsoft Word works, if you know how it does work. But yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you create margins and columns in Adobe InDesign. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload and I will see you in my next video. I can't let a nigga like Pat Kate.